All right, so in this video, we're gonna be doing some practice with graphing polar curves. So we have our first problem up on the board here, graph r equals one plus sine theta, okay? And the first thing we should do is just view r and theta as Cartesian coordinates and graph them as such so we can get a better idea of what a polar curve is gonna look like for r equals one plus sine theta. So what's our first point gonna be on this graph? Well, it's going to be just one comma zero. And why is that? Well, when we plug in zero for theta, we're just going to get r equal to one, okay? So there you go, there's our first point. Now, we need to figure out this interval on the theta axis, okay? And since sine goes up first, right, we need to figure out, okay, where is sine gonna be maximized? Well, that's gonna be where theta equals pi over two. So that should be our next tick point, all right? And that's just because this is sinusoidal, so we don't care about anything in between, right? Anyways, the pi over two point, that's just gonna be, well, one plus sine of pi over two, that's just one, so we're gonna end up with two. All right, so we go up to pi, or we go up to two at pi over two. Well, what about the next point? Well, that'll just be a multiple, right? That's just gonna be pi, and then we have three pi over two, and then we have two pi, all right? When we have when we have pi, right, that's just one plus sine of pi, which is just gonna be one, all right? So next point's gonna be right here. Then one plus sine of three pi over two, okay, that's just going to be zero because sine of three pi over two is negative one. And then lastly with two pi, well, that's just gonna be the same point as when we had zero there, that's just gonna go back up to one. Cool, so now we can connect these, all right, this is going to be a sinusoidal graph. Cool. Now, we need to interpret this as a polar graph. Well, what's this going to look like? Well, we start off, okay, that's always a great point. Where do we start off? We're at 1, 0. So we're going to start here. Now, from there, we are going to go out to 2 at theta equals pi over 2, okay? So we're going to go out to 2. Now, we're starting off increasing very fast, okay? So we're going to go out first and we're going to kind of mellow off so it's kind of going to look more i guess you could say circular at the top okay so we can do that now so we start off here and we go to pi over two all right now at pi right what are we doing on that in that like little space between pi over two and pi all right well we're not starting off too fast right? it's kind of just going to be a mirror of what happened from zero to pi over two okay so we can do that going to pi. All right, cool. So we've done that. And now we have to go to three pi over two. Now here we're starting off fast and we're kind of leveling off to three pi over two. Okay, so we're gonna start off decreasing fast and then just kind of mellow off when we end up at three pi over two. And that's just going to be at zero. So it's gonna be at this point right here. So it's gonna look something like this. Okay, and then to two pi, well, that's just gonna be a mirror of what happened for this piece right here. So we're gonna get this, all right? Fun fact, this thing is called a cardioid, all right? Because it supposedly looks like a heart. Now, me and my former Calc 2 teacher disagree on that. I think it looks more like the peach emoji and he thinks it looks a little more like a butt. So that's gonna do it for this problem. So next problem here, graph r equals negative two sine theta, okay? So another sine theta question, okay? Another question with sine theta in it. So we should already kind of understand what our axes are gonna be, or sorry, what our interval is going to be for theta, okay? Well, we can kind of just lay that out, right? We have pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So where are we starting off? Well. When we plug in theta equals zero, we're just going to get zero here. Okay, when we have when we plug in pi over two for theta, we're going to get one here, and one times negative two is of course just going to be negative two. So negative two down here, we're gonna end up with something like this. All right, now what about when 
we plug in uh, pi, well, that's just going to be right here. And of course, then we see the kind of sinusoidal graph that we end up with. All right, cool. Now we need to figure out what this is going to look like as a polar graph. Okay, so we start at the origin. Okay, we're going to start at the origin. And as we approach pi over 2, okay, well, pi over 2 is going to be negative 2. Okay, so that means that we're going to start off actually going this way. Okay, we're going to start off going this way. And we're starting off decreasing our radius a lot, which means we're going to start getting farther and farther from the origin quicker. All right. So, and then, of course, it's going to level off as we hit pi over 2. So it's going to end up looking something like this. Okay, and actually we'll be approaching 3 pi over 2 because we have to go in the opposite direction since we have a negative r. Okay, so then we have to go from pi over 2 to pi, and that's just going to be an exact mirror of what just happened. Okay, so it's going to look like this. All right, and what about from pi to 3 pi over 2? Well, now we're positive, okay? So we're going from pi to 3 pi over 2, and we're starting off increasing fast and then mellowing out. Well, that's exactly what we did from 0 to pi over 2, right? Except we had a negative r. Well, actually, we're done because this is the exact same thing as this, okay? And that's something that you want to look out for, right? You kind of generally want to do your axes until you start seeing repeated points, all right? So, for example, here we have a, this is going to be a, negative 2 comma pi over 2 and that's the same thing as well 2 comma 3 pi over 2 right so you kind of see that and you're like okay well we're probably going to be done here then because this is just going to be a repeat of what just what i just graphed okay so definitely look out for things like that but yeah i mean that's that's really all it is it's just that little circle guy there okay so that's going to do it for this video so if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for parametric and polar, the explanation video for graphing polar curves, and the next video in the series. See you soon.